In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace your radiator. Let's get started. To drain the coolant, you'll notice that on the front driver's side, you have a little drain plug with a Phillips head cut out for the radiator. So if you stick a screwdriver up here, turn it counterclockwise to loosen it, have a collection bucket ready to catch all the fluid. There you go. We'll just let that drain. Now with our coolant drained, we can come back up top. I'm going to loosen the two top intercooler bolts. Take an 11 millimeter and loosen up these two clamps. This is going to allow you to remove the fitting here or the coupler. And now this can tilt forward out of the way. To give it even more swing on the driver's side, right next to this power steering cooler hose, I'm going to remove this 10 millimeter bolt. Now it can really get out of our way. At the top, you'll see two more 10 millimeter bolts. These hold the power steering cooler in place. Let's remove both of those. Hold the cooler. Pull the bolts out, and then you can move this out of the way sideways. It's connected with hoses on this side, so it can bend out of the way. Next, I want to remove the hood latch, and to do that, because it's connected with cables on both sides, to get it out of the way completely, I'm going to disconnect this cable. You don't have to, you can just simply pull it away, but I think it's easier if we get this out of here, and then we can move the hood latch over to one side completely. Continue removing this cable off of the radiator support, because we will have to unbolt this. It's clipped in over there up top, and over here on the side. Let this hang. Now take the two 10 millimeter bolts out that hold the hood latch in place. Remove this retainer and unclip it over here too. We also have to remove the two horns, so take out the bolt for the bracket. You don't have to unplug them, you can just put them to the side. At the top, we have to get rid of all these wires here and this hose that runs across. So pull it up, remove it from its retainer. Okay, move it out of the way. This right here is a vacuum hose. It's a small one, so be careful not to break it. Remove the main power wire. and remove this rubber piece. To completely take it out, it has this plastic clip on each side. If you pop this out, you should be able to remove it. There you go. Do this to both sides. Next, I wanna remove the upper radiator shroud, and to do that, I will just start over here and work my way to the other side. I wanna get off anything that is bolted to it, such as this power steering fluid reservoir. Use an eight millimeter socket, and remove both of the retaining bolts. Now you can push this away. To get a little bit more clearance for this reservoir, I wanna take out the upper radiator hose. To do that, you need a pick or a pocket screwdriver. I'm gonna choose a pick because it'll be easier. And with that pick, all you have to do is just pull out on this retaining clip. Make sure you don't lose it because sometimes these go flying and uh, you're gonna to wanna to save it. Looks like the clip can't come out completely, so I'm gonna take out this eight millimeter bolt so I can kind of maneuver the shroud out of the way. There we go. Now I can take this out completely, wiggle the radiator hose, and break it free off of the radiator. Now be careful because this fitting is plastic, so you don't want to tap it with a hammer if it's stuck. Just work it back and forth. If you break this, you're going to need a new hose. Okay. This is pretty tight on here. Okay, try to get it off completely. Now back to this tank, pull up on it. It's just clipped into the upper shroud as a, uh, like a push down clip. So if you pull up on it, there we go, it unhooks and you can move it away. You also have this line that's attached to it. You could take it off. I'm gonna try and see if it gives me more room. It might not, but I think it's worth a shot. That's pretty good right there. We'll leave all of this as is. 
I have my battery removed so you can see, otherwise I could not get you a clear shot. But if you look straight down underneath that power steering reservoir, you'll see this eight millimeter bolt, which pulls the upper to the lower fan shroud. Get yourself a long extension, sneak a socket down there, and let's remove it. I have to block your view to take this out, but if you have a magnet, it's also a lot easier because you can come in from the top. There it is. Same on the other side, one bolt up top, one down there. This one will be easier to get to because there's no power steering reservoir in the way. On the back of the shroud, you also have this, which is bolted on with a 10 millimeter bolt. Remove it. You could unplug it and disconnect the vacuum hose, but why disturb the connections when you can just remove the bolt? Pull it out of the way, leave it connected, and push it aside. Now pull up on the upper fan shroud and you should be able to get it out of your way. There it is. Now on each side of the radiator, you'll see that it has one of these connections here that clamps it down to the upper radiator support. It's held on by two 10 millimeter bolts, so let's remove both of those. Do the same to the other side. Now on each side, let's remove the three 13 millimeter bolts that hold this radiator support onto the frame rail. Now carefully pull this up and remove it off of the truck. Watch out for these pieces here. Make sure they, you take them with you. There it is. Now for ease of access to the radiator, I'm just going to remove this charge pipe here on the passenger side. And that requires removing that 11 millimeter hose clamp, not, well not removing it, but loosening it up just so we can pull the pipe out and I wanna get it out of the way. You don't have to but I think it's gonna make things a lot easier. Now you can pull this up and straight out. Lots more room on this side to work with. So I changed my mind. I think it's going to be more beneficial for us to remove the inner cooler, get it out of the way. You don't have to remove this cooler over here. This can sit to the side, but the intercooler being out opens up a lot more. So we can pull the AC condenser out further so that we can get the radiator out easier. All we have to do at this point is remove this 10 millimeter bolt and then loosen up the fitting on the hose clamp on the bottom for the charge pipe. So let's do that. Pull this straight up. Now from underneath, you'll see this hose here with two clamps. I wanna loosen up this one that bolts up to the intercooler. Use your 11 millimeter socket and loosen this up. You don't have to take it off completely, just loosen it up, and that will allow you to remove this hose off of the inner cooler. Okay. And now with that lower fitting disconnected, we can pull the inner cooler right out. Set it aside. Next, I wanna get this cooler off of the radiator, and it's held on by two eight millimeter bolts, one on each side. So I'm gonna start over here, unbolt it, and then as you can see, the top bracket is just clipped in there. It'll slide out. And two, pull it down and out. And at this point, I'm gonna put a collection bucket underneath here because I'm going to disconnect this hose off of the radiator. This is the transmission cooler. So when you do this, it's going to leak transmission fluid. And then after this is disconnected, we can move this cooler slightly more out of the way. It's still connected at the bottom and you don't have to disconnect it. You can if you want. I won't, I'm just going to lean it forward. Uh, but this is gonna be the next step right here, disconnecting that hose off the radiator. This clamp right here is just a regular hose clamp, so take an eight millimeter socket and loosen up the nut. Wiggle the hose and pull it straight off. At this point, you can pick up this cooler and move it out of the way. 
Again, like I said, you can disconnect it completely if you want to, but it's not necessary. One last thing here is going to be unbolting the AC condenser. Just so you know, you don't have to evacuate the AC. We can just move it out of the way. So two eight millimeter bolts at the top and this thing should come out. With the AC condenser pulled aside, we're gonna have to disconnect this rubber piece off of the radiator. So we'll take your trim tool, whatever you're using, and just remove this clip. If you look down here, the hood release cable is clipped in. So I'll pop that off. On the driver's side, I'm gonna remove this rubber piece by popping out these push clips. Remove the overflow hose at the top. The lower radiator hose is not actually at the bottom of the radiator. It's somewhere two thirds of the way down on the passenger side. So if you look straight down, it'll look just like the top one, except it'll be a little bit lower. So I'm gonna grab a pick and remove that spring clip there. There it is, and same thing, wiggle it till it comes off. Okay, set it aside. Some coolant will still leak out. Now that the radiator has fully drained, you can go ahead and put the drain plug right back, nice and snug. Next, we have to disconnect the lower radiator fan shroud, and there are two eight millimeter bolts underneath that hold this on. You can kind of see one over here. It's a little bit difficult to see and somewhat difficult to access. I'm actually gonna have to block your view in order to access it. But there's one on each side and we have to remove both because the radiator shroud needs to stay in the truck while the radiator comes up. So I'm gonna take a ratchet wrench, it's one of the only tools that I have that'll fit there easily and remove the two bolts. On the driver's side, you can easily see it if you follow the lower radiator support slash frame rail and you can look right into that opening you'll see the eight millimeter bolt sticking out of the fan shroud there is the second one at this point it's time to take the radiator out so if you have a helper that'll be easiest because it's heavy and large lift up and once we get it up about halfway we'll be able to slide it out of here Down at the bottom of the radiator, you have another hose. So remove the hose clamp with a six millimeter socket and then pull the hose off. Help it along with the screwdriver. Just be careful not to tear the hose. There we go. Make sure you have your collection bucket underneath because fluid will leak. Now with everything out of the way, let's continue lifting up on the radiator. There it is. Now grab your new radiator and with the help of a second person, gently slide it down. Pay attention to your radiator fins on your radiator, but also all of your other coolers that are in the way. AC condenser, make sure you don't catch any lines, hoses, or wires when you drop this down. And make sure that it seats itself on its mounting location on the bottom. Let's get the bolts for the lower shroud back in place. All right, make sure they're nice and snug. Nice and snug. On the new radiator, make sure the pet cock is fully closed. As you can see, on this one it was not. It's always a good idea to double check. Now with the radiator in, the next thing I wanna do is put back the AC condenser. So slide it into its mounting locations. When you put it back, make sure that on each side, these tabs hook into the slot on the radiator and press them down all the way. You want it to lock in. Then at the top, put in the eight millimeter mounting bolts for the AC condenser. One on each side, of course, and snug them up. Next, I want to put back this cooler. This was the next one in line. And to do that, we need to reconnect the two hoses that we disconnected for it. One of them being this one right here. So remove the cap and the other one is a little bit lower. Remove that cap as well. I'm gonna start with this one, put the hose back, make sure it bottoms out all the way. 
and then grab your hose clamp, which if it's not in good condition anymore, go ahead and replace it. Mine is just fine, so I'm gonna reuse it. Tighten up the hose clamp, make sure it's snug, but don't over tighten it. These hose clamps tend to strip out if you over tighten them and then you'll need a new one. Okay, right about there is good. Tug on the hose to make sure it can't come off. It can't, perfect. Now let's do the same to this upper hose. Slide the hose on and then we'll tighten up the hose clamp. Nice and snug, hose is not coming off, perfect. Now we just need to mount this cooler. So position it in its mounting clips and now get the two bolts. Make sure that it hooks into here and then line up the bolt holes. Hold it nice and centered and snug these up. Now we need to put back this rubber shield here that we uh, remove the push clips from. So slide them back into the radiator. All right, do the same to the other side. Make sure it's sitting properly. What this does is it helps direct the air into the coolers and the radiator and not allow it to go past it. On the passenger side, don't forget to reinstall the charge pipe if you removed it. Slide it into the coupler, line up the clamp and snug it up. Next, I wanna get this upper radiator support in Make sure that the metal shims slash spacers here are still in there. As you can see on the driver's side, there's this large pin that sticks out. What you have to do is line it up, press it down on that side first, then line up the passenger side. There we go. Make sure the radiator bushings, the top mounts line up. Okay, let's put in the bolts. I want to start with these lower bolts so I can press the radiator support up against the body and then I'll do the top ones. I loosened up this one so I can relieve the pressure of it getting pressed down and then I pressed it back in. When I undid this one, the radiator support didn't pop back out because the top ones were already tight, so it held it in place. I just wanted it to be um, not under pressure, basically. Since we're here, let's mount this cooler. Now let's mount the hood latch. When you put this back, try to line it up exactly to how it was before. If it's a tiny bit off, it'll be okay. But if it's too far off, the hood will either not latch properly or even worse, it won't want to unlatch. So make sure you get it as close as possible to how it was before. Don't forget we had this cable removed off of the other side. So clip it in and slide it through to secure it. And don't forget to clip in this hood release cable. Tuck it down and out of the way. Secure the hood latch cable. Now let's mount the horns. Over here, there was a retainer for the hood latch cable, as well as one over here, and one over here. Let's get the intercooler back in, slide it down. Make sure it falls into its mounting bushings on the bottom. Now let's reconnect the lower hose, bring it up and over, make sure it's fully seated here. There we go. All right, make sure you bottom it out up against the, um, the ridge here and bring your clamp over. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. It's squeezing the hose, but not too much. You don't want it to completely crush it. And you also don't want this to break. Put this coupler back on, line up the intercooler and now that we know that everything lines up, let's put the bolts in. And let's clamp it on. Let's reattach this cooler, line up the tab on the bottom and then the top bolt hole. Start it in. 
And don't forget about this one that's hiding down here. This one is uh, held on with a rubber bushing, so make sure you don't crush that bushing. As you can see, it's starting to squish, so I stopped. If you crush it completely, it'll split and deteriorate over time a lot faster. Let's put this back, make sure it goes along the top of the radiator, and then the sides go around the AC condenser. This makes sure that all the air is directed into the coolers, not around them. I had some of the push clips missing, but just make sure you clip it in with any clips that you had. This should have some push clips on each side that clip into this upper radiator support. Second one is a little bit more tricky because it's behind the horns and I probably should have done that first before mounting the horns. Let's put in the upper fan shroud now. I'm going to slide it down on the driver's side first. go. Let's reconnect the upper radiator hose, slide it on, make sure that this tab lines up and push it in all the way. The slot in here, if you look closely, it lines up. So take that metal clip and put it right back in. It should seat itself down all the way like this. If it doesn't go down, that means the hose isn't fully seated. And as soon as it builds pressure, it's going to pop right off if not leak right off the bat. So make sure it's in all the way and the clip seats itself down. Put these caps back on and let's resecure the radiator on its mount. Once again, batteries do not have to be removed for this. I only did it so that you can see what's happening here. Let's put back the uh, hose that goes to the overflow from the top of the radiator, slide it in all the way, and clamp it down. Let's reattach this here, put the bolt back in, and tighten it up. Okay, now let's reattach the upper to the lower fan shroud. So as you can see on each side, there's a mounting bolt right there. I'm going to start with this one because it lines up perfectly. And that's nice and snug. Get the top one in. And let's do the other side. Okay, so this one's a little trickier. Stick a pry bar in here and kind of guide that lower uh, shield in place, the lower fan shroud. All right, just make sure it's nice and tight. Do the same to the top one. Now bring the power steering reservoir up. And remember it has to slide up more than you think it needs to because it has to hook into the fan shroud down there. Tighten it up. Now let's fill up the cooling system, remove the cap off of your overflow and pour in manufacturer specified fluid. If you don't know what that is, check your owner's manual. You'll notice that there's a cold fill range right here. This is what you're aiming for. So add coolant until you get to right about here and then I'll run you through the bleeding procedure. Okay, as you can see the level rose to right at the top of the full line, the cold full line that is. And I wanna leave it here, not at the minimum of the fill because there is still air in the system. As you can see, it's actively bubbling through this hose. So I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna clean up my mess, whatever I spilt here. I'll check it again and then we will run the vehicle. If you wanted to help the process along, you can massage the radiator hoses. As you can see, every time I do that, it bubbles up a lot. Now let's turn the truck on. Turn the ignition to the on position, wait for the glow plugs to cycle, and there we have it, we're good to go. Perfect, starts right up. Now we want to come over to the HVAC controls, put the heat all the way on high, blower on medium, and we'll make it blow on the vents, that way I can feel, feel the heat 
coming through as it warms up. We wanna make sure that we get heat in the cab. If there is no heat coming in through the cab, that means your heater core still has air in it. Obviously, pay attention to your temperature gauge. It's not gonna put out any heat until it warms up. But if you don't have heat in your cab and it's fully warmed up, you have air in the system. So shut the truck off, let it sit. Maybe you do another bleed procedure after that and the air should go away. Pay attention to your coolant level. Right now it's here at the minimum line of the cold fill. Obviously as it heats up, it's going to rise up. If you wanted to leave the cap open, go ahead, do it now while the engine's cold. Once it runs for five or 10 minutes, do not touch that cap, don't open it. It will be under pressure. Relieving the pressure will sometimes help push the air out. Not always though. And once we shut it off and it's at full operating temperature, we'll come back here and make sure that the level hasn't dropped too far. If it has, we'll top it back off. All right, at this point, I have plenty of heat coming through the vents. It is not warmed up fully, but I am inside in a garage. So I'm gonna shut it off, pull it outside, take it for a test drive, make sure it gets nice and warm, and then come back and check the coolant level. So at this point, you can go ahead and take it for a road test and you should be all set. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.